So he talks about in the first minute or so, um, he just talks about different ways to keep your token safe and different different hacks that have happened along um, the way. I mean, he's very generalized um, talking about that. But then he starts here. So I want everybody to pay attention. However, there is one new attack that's slowly beginning to take effect with different people's wallets, when people are in different yield farms or they're, they're buying tokens, they're transferring them to exchanges, they're doing all sorts of general things that people do with cryptocurrency and they're losing their shirt, they're losing all of their money to scammers. And this particular vulnerability can be found when using MetaMask. And lots of us use MetaMask. And the thing here, unless you know about this, even if you're using a Ledger or Trezor device, this particular hack and vulnerability um, is still open to you and your account. One thing that's different in this video to all the other videos I've seen about this is I'm going to show you how to stop the attack on multiple blockchains. So we're going to have a look at Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum and lastly Tron. We'll look at what the attack is and how you can stop it happening to you. PancakeSwap, great protocol, genuine protocol, genuine people behind it. I've just got it up on the screen here, so I've pulled up the farms page and the first one on the list here is the Cake BNB farm. Let's say that we want to put some coins into our pancake swap Cake BNB yield farm. The first thing we would do is click the enable button. When we do that, MetaMask pops up on the screen. It says give permission to access your Cake LP. Uh, there's a transaction fee of nine cents and we would scroll down and click the blue confirm button and then that farm would be successfully enabled. But let's just rewind a second and have a look at what we're actually doing here. It says by granting permission, you are allowing the following contract to access your funds. And if we click this edit permission link here, uh, we can just drill down a bit further and see exactly what's going on. It's called a spend limit permission. It says allow pancake swap to withdraw and spend up to the following amount. And there are two options. There's a proposed approval limit and a custom spend limit. Now, quite correctly, PancakeSwap by default has selected the proposed approval limit option, which means we are effectively allowing PancakeSwap to take 1.15 Cake LP coins directly out of our wallet. Now, if PancakeSwap was a malicious protocol, which it is and it's perfectly genuine, but if it was, then it could have selected the custom spend limit option. If we were to leave this box completely blank and go ahead with the approval, it would allow PancakeSwap to spend an unlimited amount of Cake BNB LP coins from our wallet now or in the future. So in a couple of months time, you might wake up one day having had two or three thousand dollars worth of Cape BNB LP coins in your wallet, only to find that they've been completely removed and spent never, ever to be seen again. And I recently came across somebody that lost over twelve thousand dollars and he was like really experienced in crypto. He's made millions of dollars in profit, but he fell into this trap. When I heard about it, I thought, well, I wonder if I've clicked on uh, this approve button and given an unlimited spend limit to different contracts over the last months and years. So I spent a few hours on this and actually worked out how to check. Let's start with Binance Smart Chain. So if you go to binancscancom slash token approval checker, uh, we'll put a link in the description below. This is my personal wallet. And you can see here, it's a list of all the token approvals I've given. And I was absolutely shocked that I've authorized an unlimited amount. Um, I was completely shocked. Now, I, I haven't got much money in this wallet at the moment, and I left all of these here to show you guys. If you want to 
revoke the access which I highly recommend you do as soon as you see this video click on the link in the description to BSC scan and just revoke all of the access to all of these tokens you can just click the revoke button on the right so say I want to revoke this bridge pool um, spender contract here I just click the revoke button and then I click revoke again just give it a, a few seconds this is the bridge pool one at the top just let that confirm on the blockchain and now if I refresh the screen ah, it's gone there we go bridge pool has gone and what I'm going to do after this video has finished is actually go through every single one and just revoke the access okay so that's how you do it on Binance Smart Chain all right so let me show you what i found when i went to my wallet which is what ivan and carl also found when they went to their wallets which had them very 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 concerned um rightly so all right so here's mine this is my wallet this is my main wallet that i'm using for trading and you can see that i've got unlimited approval for all of them everything i've traded pretty much even nsi and safest token and true badger which is space crown is there which this had me the most um freaked out actually I, you know not freaked out but um if every you know why aren't we protecting ours right so then um i started to come out here and revoke the access of course i wanted to wait until i was able to show you all what i found online before i revoked anything um, I am on BSC scan I've checked it a hundred times I'm on BSC scan.com I'm on their site I'm on their server I should feel totally comfortable connecting hitting this connect button but I'm not I'm just not comfortable hitting the connect button um, this is a video we've watched from somebody who's you know trying to be very helpful so instead of doing that um, I decided because for me it's bizarre that every single that I don't have anything that's listed in the other way everybody's unlimited so why don't I have at least one that is set you know that's set the other way it doesn't make sense to me that this is what I'm seeing um, my spidey sense says I don't feel like I should be so incredibly concerned about this instead I should look and I should learn how to make sure that the access isn't open, right? That, that I'm not leaving myself open. So um, what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna connect a wallet that's never been connected to NSI and we're gonna watch the process and we're gonna see how you can make sure you restrict those accesses when you are trading, when you're opening your wallet and using it on a site. So I'm gonna connect a wallet that I've not not connected here before and okay so so far I don't it just confirmed is this the wallet you want to use I said yes and then it says um, can NSI see address account balance activity and suggest transactions to approve yes there's nowhere for me to edit approvals at this point so I'm going to go ahead and connect my wallet okay I'm connected so so far I haven't been asked anything so let me just do a buy order and see if I'm asked when I do a buy order so I'm gonna go ahead and put 0 0.04 0 0.04 BNB is gonna give me this many NSI tokens I'm gonna submit my order and here's where I'm looking for approvals for MetaMask all right so on a buy side comes up says you're connected and on a buy side, it doesn't give me any access to, to this feature that this that video was talking about. Doesn't come up here. I'm just approving the buy. So there's no, there's nothing I can do here except for either accept or reject it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and reject it for this. Okay, so let's do this and let's go to a sell because we know on a sell side, if you've watched Doug, 
um, or if you if you regularly sell crypto, you know that there is an approval process on the sell side, right? This is the part where somebody's taking something that you own out of your wallet, right? You're on the buy side, you're spending your BNB to buy something, but on the sell side, you're giving up tokens that maybe you, um, you know, wanted to, wow, look at all these nefarious tokens. Oh, because this is a wallet that I don't trade with, right? So I'm not going to see anything, but, and I'm so glad this came up because this, this is where this problem is in. And I have a feeling this is how people are losing, um, losing their money. I think it's these tokens anyway, and we'll click sell now and sure. Yeah, looks good. Contract is right. I'll go ahead and submit this. Oh, look, give permission to access your NSI. This is the first time we're shown this permission. So let's see how NSI is handling this permission. Edit permission, proposed approval limit. NSI is handling this correctly. So this is saying, are you giving permission to sell this amount of tokens? 11486481041 one, one, Yes, that's what I'm giving permission to. Only that amount of tokens, no more. This made me feel a lot better when I saw that NSI is handling this correctly. So why then is this page showing me unlimited, not just for NSI, but for every single token where I've interacted on a page with. And why isn't it showing me somebody that I've interacted with, but I had the other one selected? That part I don't understand. Um, I, but here's what I, here's the training. You as a consumer of crypto, and of a user of MetaMask, you need to take responsibility. And any time when these messages are coming up over here, we need you to be watching what you're giving permission to. Because this can happen. I'm showing you right now NSI and how NSI is handling it. I've looked this up also on um, True Badger, and I've looked it up on Safest Token, R3 tokens. All of them um, give the permission they give is here in the proposed. My assumption is that this is the default. This is the default in the code. It's those nefarious tokens, those, those airdrops that you're being put, that are being put in your wallet. Those likely, if you went and tried to give approval on those, I'm going to guess your spend limit is unlimited and they're going to have access now into your wallet. So, and, and Deb, probably a, a token that is designed to do a rug pull or a honey pot, any of those kind of tokens would probably be using the custom. Could be using the custom. And, but the good news is you have the, you have the access to change the permission. Anytime it comes up and asks you to, to give permission, you have to look for, this is the new training. This is the new thing every single person who uses MetaMask is gonna do. But one thing that, a point that you're making that I think is really, really good here is anytime you're trading a token for the first time, a new token for the first time, and you're, you should, and you're gonna sell it, you yeah. should review this on every one of the tokens you trade for the first time, because if it comes up like ours is, that's in the contract. So, so probably right. not a problem in the future, but first time I would, Deb, this is awesome. Way. When you interact with a new token, you can see straight away what you're giving access to. And I want to send a big shout out and a thank you to Carl and Ivan, both of them for reaching out and having us uh, uh, walk through this together. And thank you guys. You guys are amazing. Awesome. Well, well done, Deb. Thank you.